As you guys know, Matt and I spent three months driving the Mahindra Scorpio to give you a totally unbiased and fair review of one of India's top selling off-road SUVs. After that video went viral, Mahindra actually reached out to us to sponsor this video, simply talking about what I learned on my recent trip to India, where I got to spend a few days talking to Mahindra engineers, seeing the guts of the Scorpio, as well as driving it at 200 kilometers an hour, and of course, off-road. So, Without any talking points or guidance from Mahindra, they haven't seen this video yet, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of the Mahindra Scorpio, or Scorpio N, as it's known in its home country of India. I'll also tell you some things about the future of Mahindra's Scorpio, which I saw prototyping in India, which, let's just say, is gonna really put Mahindra on the global map. So, when we were touring the Mahindra Research Valley facilities in Chennai, India, one of the craziest things the engineers were showing us was the actual ladder frame construction of the Scorpio. As a quick recap, it essentially consists of two steel beams that run parallel to each other, and although this makes it one of the heavier chassis types, it's better suited to rough conditions requiring a more rigid structure, like for example, off-roading. Compared to the Scorpio Classic, the Scorpio N takes that same ladder frame and extends it by 60 millimeters, from 1520 to 1580 millimeters. That's to add more comfort and practicality to the interior, as well as improve structural stability. In the larger SUV segment, there is actually a trade-off between having a good center of gravity, meaning good driving dynamics, as well as having a commanding seating position with good visibility. The engineers at Mahindra tackled this by using longitudinally mounted suspension at the front. Having the suspension knuckle at approximately half a meter long allows for good linear suspension characteristics, basically up and down movement, while minimizing wheel camber, which is wheels tilting side to side. I discovered this for myself at Mahindra's SUV proving track, where I managed a top speed of 192 kilometers an hour on their high speed gradient track. That wasn't terrifying at all. The frame also features a 365 millimeter crash tip, which is capable of absorbing a lot of energy given the strength of the steel used. Interestingly, in contrast to the monocoque frame, which is seen in something like a Mahindra XUV 700, a ladder frame chassis will actually absorb most of the force of a crash. In this case, it's around 80%. This means that the ladder frame itself is the foundation for crash safety, and as such, careful thought has been placed into designing the frame around occupant safety. So. As you can tell, for ladder frame constructed vehicles, the ladder frame itself is what is responsible for not only the NVH or noise vibration and harshness levels from the drivetrain and road, but also the safety of the car. For this reason, Mahindra engineers were proud to share that the Scorpio N's frame is one of the best in class in terms of torsional rigidity. Okay, so let's talk about the ride and handling characteristics of the Scorpio N. If you've watched our unsponsored and brutally honest reviews, there's two of them now on the Mahindra Scorpio, you'll know how much we've praised Mahindra on their ride and handling tune. So you can take my word for it that we're not just saying this, it's one of the most comfortable body on frame cars I've personally driven. I had no idea why until I went to India though, and it's actually truly fascinating. For one, they have the enormous front suspension setup that we discussed before. And secondly, they use their first in segment Pentalink suspension, which contains a Watts link with frequency dependent damping and multi-tuned valve discs. That's a lot of jargon but it essentially allows the car to handle the toughest of Indian road conditions, both on and off road, while also minimizing body roll and reducing noise vibration and harshness. And trust me, I experienced the heavily compromised nature of Indian roads. So it's no surprise to me that back at home in Australia, the Scorpio lives a comfortable life. Another big thing I learned was that Mahindra knows that people want an SUV that will last. So they've intentionally heavily reduced weld points versus unnamed competitors so that the tensile strength of the frame is maximized. And although unfortunately we won't see it in Australia, Mahindra engineers told us that this suspension and ladder frame setup is what the five door tar is being prototyped with. And by the way, we might be heading over for the launch of that. So make sure you stay subscribed to check that out. All right, so that moves us nicely into the engine and reliability, which I know is a bit of a touchy subject. I'm certainly not comfortable vouching for the reliability of any car that I don't personally own, but I went into the facility with an open mind and I left with a newfound appreciation for Mahindra powertrains. On a human level, it was honestly super clear that the engineers I spoke to, who were not media trained in the slightest, were incredibly proud of the work that they've been doing recently. Off record, I heard from many engineers that the current and future Mahindra products were a whole new level of quality. And judging by the smell of drying paint in the EV prototyping facility, it's clear that they're investing heavily in this emerging new class of vehicles. And even though EVs are the next major frontier, 
Mahindra's current internal combustion fine tuning is in full swing. They even have a massive powertrain development facility that's ISO 17025 approved, which means that they can perform all the in-house accreditations for all of their powertrains. So unlike some manufacturers which have to go to third parties because they don't have the tools and expertise to accurately test their cars in-house, Mahindra has vertically integrated their years of agricultural engine development and leveraged that for their automotive space seamlessly. And we can see the fruits of that in the Scorpio, which comes with the venerable M-Hawk 2.2 liter turbo diesel. Honestly, the M-Hawk diesel engines and M-Stallion petrol engines don't have class leading power and torque. But having spoken to the engineers and seeing the number of cycles that these engines go through in terms of comprehensive testing and evaluation, and also experiencing it for ourselves, not just off-road, but also in our long-term testing, I haven't seen a good reason to question the reliability of Mahindra's engines. So let's talk about the testing and fatiguing that they put the cars through at Mahindra. During my tour of Mahindra Research Valley, by far the biggest lab out of the entire complex was the Systems Evaluation Lab. This is where everything on the car, from the horn to the door durability and far more is tested. And they run their various vehicles through hundreds of thousands of cycles. Now, undoubtedly, other manufacturers will be doing the same, but remember that Mahindra is ensuring that their cars will last on Indian roads in particular, meaning that Australian conditions should be a piece of cake. Matt and I have done a few factory tours before, most of which we can't film or even talk about because of strict NDAs. So without getting too specific, the testing we saw Mahindra do was some of the most thorough testing I've ever seen. We all know Mahindra's background is agricultural, and that is for farmers who require hard working machinery to last. And so again, the engine testing was pretty intense. Seeing the door handles being slammed over and over again, in fact, each door handle gets slammed 100,000 times with strict tolerances to make sure they don't ever break. Even the windscreen wipers, they ran them for 500 hours, which is the equivalent of over 300,000 kilometers of driving. I've never seen a horn test, but yes, even that is tested for reliability over hundreds of hours. And all that translates into how it drives on and off the road. So taking the Scorpio to 200 kilometers an hour was theoretically the scariest shit I've ever done. But in practice, because of the engineering and tuning of the suspension setup, which Mahindra engineers actually drew a parallel to BMW setup, it was honestly a really solid experience. More importantly, on Aussie roads, because part of its suspension tuning was done in Australia, it's honestly one of the best driving body on frame off-roaders I've ever driven. It could even be the best, it's that good. And once again, we go into more detail in our full long-term review of the Scorpio, which I want to stress was not sponsored. I also documented how the Scorpio performs off-road in the final section of my India vlog, which I've linked below. Needless to say, it exceeded my expectations, and I'll even quote one of their engineers, which bravely filmed for me, and it was an incredible experience. He said it performs even better than the dedicated off-roader, the Mahindra Tar, in most off-road scenarios. The wheel articulation in particular, which is one of the hardest things to get right in an off-roader, has been done phenomenally well in the Scorpio. So what's the future of the Scorpio? As part of the upcoming facelift, Sources within Mahindra tell us off record that the Scorpio will come with the same active safety suite as the XUV700 or better. Considering the lack of active safety tech was the main reason the Scorpio received the zero star ANCAP safety rating recently, it's not wrong to assume it'll do a lot better as part of the facelift. It'll also probably come with seven seats in Australia, unlike its current six seat captain seat configuration. Though I'd be lying if I said I didn't love the captain's chairs. I can't tell you too much about what I saw at the Mahindra Proving Grounds because we might literally get sued, but let's say the future of Scorpio is electrifying. I know, stupid joke, but seriously, Mahindra has not shied away from the fact that their beloved off-roaders, including the Scorpio and the Tar, are gonna be built on their upcoming Inglo modular platform with cutting edge performance all wheel drive features. At least that's what they say. In fact, their Vision Tar E concept, which I'm sure we've all seen by now, is a very good look at what the future of their off-roaders will be like. For now, let's just say, based on what I saw at their new top secret EV research and design facility, Mahindra is going to be a real threat to existing brands with just their EVs in the next few years. Sponsored or not, based on what I saw, that's what I really think. But you can let me know what you think about the Mahindra Scorpio down below. What do you think is the coolest thing you learned about the Scorpio? I'll be reading every single comment. Ciao for now.